Hey fellow ecom nerds and welcome back to the channel. It is Andrew back again for another video. And in today's video, we're going to do the first in our Facebook zero to hero series. And today we're going to talk about how to start from scratch. So if you've never done Facebook ads before and you have to start a brand new account for maybe your new Shopify store, we're going to show you how to set up from scratch and how to start setting up your Facebook ads for success, even when you don't have any data or anything to go off. Now, this is going to be the first in a three part series. So today we're talking about pretty much starting from nothing. The next one will be on uh, measuring results and also retargeting. And then the third one will be on lookalikes and then how to scale up your accounts. So the third one's going to be way more advanced. And this is where a lot of people trip up. It's in terms of the actual scaling of your account. So how do you scale horizontally? So if you're getting really good results, how can you amp up the spend and still make sure that you're getting really, really, really good return on investment. So we're going to talk about that in the third one. But today we're going to start from pretty much nothing. Like we've got a new account, got a new store, and I'm going to show you how I would go through and set that up. So this is not the first time that I've set up and run an e-commerce store. I actually own and operate uh, an e-commerce agency and I've taken a few clients now to over a million dollars. And uh, one of the ones I'll show you now is actually in the alcohol space. And uh, we actually took them from $215,000 all the way up to a million dollars last year. And we're looking to crack probably about $3 million this year in sales. So I wanted to show you that we're not a bunch of gurus. We're not going to show you a bunch of fake numbers. We want to show you exactly what we've done. So you can see the figures in the account. So you know that we're legit. So let's go and have a look at that now. So you can see here in this one that we've done in the last 28 days, we've done $295,000 in revenue just on Facebook ads. So we're running other channels on here as well. So it's not just Facebook ads. We're also doing Google ads. Uh, we're doing a little bit of Pinterest. We're doing SEO. We're doing email, which has been another big driver. Uh, Facebook's also been great in terms of actually building up um, email subscriptions and uh, the email list. So Facebook's not just about selling. It's also about improving your customer list as well. So you can see here last 28 days, 295K, pretty good. Um, let's go and have a quick look at what we did from the start of the year so you can have a better idea of that. So now we're inside the account that I just showed you inside of Facebook Analytics. And I just wanted to show you how much we spent. So we spent this year to date. So this is from 1st of January, 2020, all the way up to the 15th of September. Uh, so just yesterday, which is ticked over on my um, on my computer here. Uh, you, if you're in the US, you're probably still on the 15th. But anyway, we spent about $15,736.32. We have had, uh, what's that, 1,326 purchases on the website. We have a return on ad spend of 20.11. That means we've put every dollar we put in, we're getting $20.11 back. So that's really good results and way higher than normal. Most Facebook agencies and, and Facebook uh, users are probably going to get around eight to 10 at their best. And that's usually really, really good. This uh, account has a really seasoned pixel, which means we've spent a lot of time optimizing the Facebook ads um, pixel here and, and Facebook ads account. So that's why we have done so well. Um, and obviously we've been doing a lot of testing, split testing, and it's just been over about three years of work getting this Facebook account to where it is now. So it's gonna take a little while to see some results like this. And obviously these guys have great products that everyone loves. So if you don't have a great product, it's gonna be so hard to actually make any sales on Facebook. It's not all about marketing, um, but you can see that if you have the right product, you could get results like this. And if we look at the total uh, conversion value from, like I said, January to now, is around $316,392.38. So pretty good result. I'm pretty happy with that. And you can see that uh, this is not just some rubbish number that we've pulled out of nowhere. This is a live account and I can refresh it and you can see everything in here again. Uh, and you're probably gonna hear my computer taking off a bit. I'm back on my laptop today because this is where all my files <laughs> are stored for this. Uh, normally I use my nice new big desktop Mac, but I'm stuck on this one today. So bear with me for the, the fan noise. Uh, but you can see we've refreshed and all the numbers are refreshing now. So you can see that these are live. Uh, these are real numbers, not made up bullshit, like fake guru um, numbers. These are real numbers. Uh, if we go back in here, you can see, so this is our revenue. So this is total revenue for the store. 
so far uh, that's recorded. It's a little bit different to what we've got in Shopify. So I usually go within what's in Shopify and we're getting pretty close to 2 million now. But uh, Facebook's picked up that we've got around $1.63 million in revenue. So nothing to sneeze at. Um, we haven't finished off the year yet. We still got the Christmas period and also Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And this is where these guys have a really, really, really great sales. So I can see this going to $3 million. I'd be really surprised if it doesn't even go higher than $3 million this year. Um, but you can see that this is not made up. This is real numbers. And uh, you can tell that this is something that uh, we do all the time. And um, we've built other stores like this. We're working with another protein company now. Um, and I'm hoping to show you some awesome results for those guys as well uh, in the coming months. But uh, I'm also going to be starting my own store in print on demand. And I'm um, doing that as a side hustle for now that I'm going to be building along with you guys. So if anyone out there is doing um, a Shopify store now, uh, you can follow along with me over the next couple of weeks. We're going to start with doing Facebook ads and I'm going to get you up to speed with that. And then I'm going to show you how to actually set up your Shopify store completely. And uh, then we're going to go and actually set up a shop uh, print on demand store. So um, but this is kind of the precursor to that. And if you really, really, really want to make sure you're uh, going to be successful. You want to get good at Facebook ads uh, and a few other ad platforms too, which we'll talk about over the coming months. So when you're setting up your new store, you want to make sure that you have your Facebook pixel installed. I'm not going to go through and show you exactly how to set up a Facebook pixel. There's plenty of videos out there on that. It's very rudimentary, very simple. And if you have Shopify, which is a platform I'm using, it is super simple to connect. And I'll show you a really quick way of doing it. Um, but then you'll have to go in and do it yourself. But if you've got something like Magento or WooCommerce or BigCommerce or one of those other suppliers or other platforms, then you can find plenty of those uh, installation videos online. And I don't want to waste your time with that because it's very, very simple. Um, but anyway, what I would recommend is watching this video first, kind of getting the gist of it, and then you can go back and install your pixel. And then kind of, I would say, watch this one again to go through and um, implement what I'm talking about today. So. Once I've got the Facebook pixel in, which I've so I've got my back end of my Shopify store that I'm still building. It's not it's not ready yet. Um, so you can see here if I'm going to set up my Facebook uh, account and my Facebook page and connect it to my Shopify, I can go into the back end of Shopify. I can then go into sales channels, and this is where I'd actually find my Facebook. Um, this is where I find my Facebook uh, option to connect. I've already done that, and you can see it here. This is what will happen when you connect it, and if you go in it's going to have all the Facebook settings uh, or it should have if it doesn't. Yep. Cool. Sorry. My laptop is, I think, about ready to explode. It's uh, it's had a good run, but I think it's on its last legs. Um, cool. So that is where everything will be uh, once you've set up your Facebook account uh, and connected to Shopify. Then you wanna go back and check your pixel. So this is my pixel for my company, which is gonna be a clothing company called F-Bomb Clothing uh, or F-Bomb Clothing Co, uh, which is gonna be pretty much a pop culture, like kind of t-shirt, uh, like cool t-shirt, cool designs um, with some like a funny edgy kind of feel to it. So uh, yeah, there's a few of those out there already, but I thought I could probably do one better. Well, we'll see, I, I suppose. Um, so you just want to go back into your pixel and just make sure that you have a few things set up. Uh, the biggest one being here, which is automatic advanced matching. So what this essentially does is it will also not only track who's on your website in terms of pixel, but it can pick up some things from the back end, like potentially email addresses and phone numbers as well. And what this means is when you go to do lookalikes um, or even uh, just retargeting, it's going to be much more robust because it's, Facebook will be able to find uh, more information on people or customers of yours. Um, and then when you go to do lookalikes, it's going to make it so much easier for Facebook to go and find more customers like the ones that you have who are buying, hopefully, lots of stuff on your store. So make sure when you've set up the pixel, go in and just make sure this is on. That's probably the biggest thing I would I would say that a lot of people sometimes neglect. I think most times now this is turned on, but just you want to double check. Uh, and then, you know, you can go in and have a look at your pixel. You can do some test events. Just make sure things are firing as well. Um, so what it looks like when I've had all, if I had all this set up properly in the back end of Shopify, you would see all these different events that are firing. Um, so we've got everything in here from link clicks and ad payments and all these great things that we could turn into retargeting uh, campaigns later on. These have all been set up and these are all firing and you can test these 
uh, to make sure that that is the case. So if you wanna run down on more the nuts and bolts of Facebook and how it works, um, I've got a massive like 45 minute tutorial on uh, the Nerds of e-commerce channel already. Um, you'll be able to find that in the description below. I'll leave a link and I'll also have it pinned to my comments. So I recommend going to check that out uh, while you wait for the second video in this series to drop. It's gonna talk more about just, I guess like a, a baseline of what um, Facebook ads is looking for and how you optimize, um, how it uses machine learning, the difference between uh, campaign budget optimization and ad set level bidding, all that stuff's gonna be in there. So I recommend after you've watched this video to go and check that out. Um, and then that should get you in pretty good stead for the next video when we drop the second one uh, next week. So we're gonna talk about if we were starting from scratch or if I'm starting from scratch for this store, how would I set up my Facebook ads campaign? So the only option really you have at the beginning of a Facebook ads campaign when you're starting from nothing, you've got no data, probably no email database, nothing like that, is to test demographic and interest targeting. Now, if you're starting from nothing, that can be a pretty daunting outlook and you can get a little bit confused. So this is where we use a tool that I would say is really, really cool. And a lot of people don't even look at this, which is your audience insights tool. Now to get to the audience insights tool, you can go here. And then we just wanna go down and find audience insights, which is under your analyze and report section. So we wanna click on that. So the way I look at audience insights is pretty much like a, say like a keyword research tool, um, but for Facebook and instead of researching keywords, we're researching interests and demographics. So I've got this here. Now there's a few things I don't wanna to touch. The first thing is I do not wanna to touch the um, location because I am gonna be targeting United States as the main location area. I don't know enough about my audience because I'm starting from scratch. I can take guesses as who they are, but I really don't wanna do that. Now there's only one um, caveat to this, which is if I was running Google Analytics, and I had some detailed data on who I think the customer would be, then maybe I could use this. Maybe I know that they're women and they're between 24 and 30. I could change it. But if I didn't know anything, I didn't have Google Analytics, then I'm gonna be starting from scratch. I'm just gonna kind of leave that there. Now, you can even check if you have fans on your page already. Um, you can pump that in and you can get some information. I don't actually have anyone on here. I think this was a pet store we started once. I don't even think that's got enough. Uh, Let's see if we've got, probably got too much in here now. And we're using the page, but see, because this, this store is actually Australia. So if I was gonna target Australia, I'd pop that in here. And now I'm looking at people connected to this page, which is one of my clients. So you could go in and then have a look and see what page likes. Um, that uh, people who are actually um, liking your page uh, are, are, are kind of, you know, it's the interest that um, they have. So you can see all these things here and any of these could become, if it makes sense, um, a targeting option. But uh, let's go back to what I'm gonna be doing for my store. And we're gonna go back to the United States and we're gonna get rid of that. Now, my store is print on demand store and it is gonna be targeting, like I said, um, people who are into pop culture, but also I thought I'd put a little spin on it and kind of target people in specific jobs as well. So one of those is nurses. Um, it's a pretty big demographic, pretty easy one to test. Uh, we know that um, Nurch, Nurch, that's not the right way, is it? Nurse Merch sells. Um, so I thought we'd start with that. And uh, so for today's example, we're gonna be having a whole bunch of nurse t-shirts that we're gonna sell. And uh, we also wanna target uh, people that buy from things like Teespring and Redbubble and all those sort of places that buy print on demand type um, off those kind of platforms, maybe even Etsy. So I'll show you how we'll do that and let's do that right now. So we know one, uh, interest is registered nurses. So we've got registered nurse. Now we could go in and do a little bit of digging and see, okay, what are, what are nurses interested in? 
so there's some pages and communities these are interesting so these could be something we could target uh, so what i'm going to do essentially is bring up an excel spreadsheet now if you've got google sheets that's fine you can use that as well doesn't matter just something that you can just dump some of these in so i'm going to bring this up so like i said think of this like keyword research but we're doing interests and demographics so uh, interests or pages Now, what I might do is then go in and start seeing what these pages are all about and if they're probably something we can use. So let's start with I Love Nursing. That looks interesting. We want to get a feel for how big the page is as well because that's going to determine if we can actually target it um, as an option in Facebook as well. Uh, yep, cool. So we've got a million here. That's pretty big. So this one could be good. Uh, it's all about registered nurses, which is someone we want to target. So we might grab this. Whoop. Okay, well maybe we'll put it here uh, and go, I love nurses. Was it nurses? <laughs> oh boy, nursing. It's been a long week, trust me. And uh, I'm doing this, it is now almost one o'clock in the morning. This is a, the joys of running um, an e-commerce agency is I have to do YouTube around my actual business. Uh, and I've had almost two weeks of 70 hour weeks. So kind of slightly tired. Um, so just bear with me. Uh, I may fall asleep on the keyboard, uh, keyboard so I can't even talk. Uh, I might fall asleep on the keyboard and you might just see a whole bunch of Zs going along. That just means I've fallen asleep. Um, okay, so I love nursing. So I can't find that particular one in, but I've got, I love being a nurse, which could be something. So this could be something we could target. So I might want to put that into a spreadsheet. And then, I don't know, maybe uh, what else have we got here? That's the one I was on before, I don't think. Uh, maybe, maybe. All right, we'll see if we can target that. I think it might be too small. Then what else we got here? The other thing I'd be looking for if I'm into clothing is this. So it's like Koi Designer and Uniform Advantage. So these could be interesting because if they're buying stuff, then this could actually match up. So, okay, this is for uniforms, but that's all right. That's okay. Uh, and then we've got half a mil. So potentially, and it's verified too. You can see the little blue tick here. That means it is verified. So, all right, I might add those in. That uh, that could be cool. I can't see any numbers of how many. Oh yeah, here we go. So 100 and... That one may or may not show up. It might be too small of an audience, but uh, let's just let's just dump it in anyway. You hear my dog snoring away in the background. Uh, I'm jealous. He gets to sleep. Uh, all right, cool. So the other thing I might look at as well is nurse humor, because if I'm doing pop culture and I'm doing humor, then I want to see what's out there, what, what's, what makes nurses tick, what are they interested in, what makes them laugh. Uh, so we've got a few things. Okay, cool. So I mean, these could form eventually like t-shirt ideas or even mug ideas or something. Yeah, okay, cool. So there's some, there's some ideas in here. I'm not gonna go through everything today, but okay, cool. I found a few things. And you can start to see the power of audience insights in terms of just getting started, getting you some ideas, initial insights um, that you probably didn't have before you started. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I, I want to start targeting um, t-shirt companies. So I will go like this and go Teespring because I know this is one. Now, again, I'm not going to spend too much time going through all this. I'm just going to grab that. I might even move this onto another thing, just so 
we don't mix them up. And I'll explain this why I'm doing this in a minute as well. So we've got Teespring, we have do do uh, we have Redbubble, I think is the other one. So I'm just trying to find if uh, good old red bubbles in there. Pretty sure it is. I can't see it there, but I guarantee I've seen that come up before in the suggested section in Facebook ads when I'm putting those together. So I'm going to pop that there. Let's also chuck in Etsy. Nothing. That's interesting. I thought that would have had something. No. Okay. I think that's employees though. That looks like work. So maybe this is this one here. Let's see if that works. Ah, there we go. So I was, I was being silly. I was targeting employment instead of interest. Uh, got that. So we'll chuck that in there. It might be like something like thread, thread shirt. No. All right, well, I think that'll be, that's enough. That's enough for now. Okay, so we've gone in and we've got some interests. Um, we're probably better off than we were at the beginning. Now, obviously I would go in and do a lot more investigation in this, but just for the sake of this demo, you can see how important this tool is and how cool it is. Um, now, if you were just targeting, say you're a jewelry store, for instance, you're probably not gonna do what I'm about to do. If I was a jewelry store, what I'd probably do is just go in and make sure I'm targeting the right, you know, if it, are we in the US, make sure that's, we're targeting that, targeting the right age group or um, age range. Then I'll just be like jewelry and do things around that and then just have those in their own um, uh, spreadsheet. But because I'm doing what's called intersectionality, which is kind of, or even interest stacking is probably the better word to put it. Um, I'm actually stacking two things on top of each other because I need to target people that would use one of these sites to buy custom t-shirts, but I'm also targeting a very specific niche, which is nursing. And even more specific I can get is registered nursing. So I've got two of these um, and I wanna use them um, in my testing for my ads. So let's go over to Facebook campaigns and let's set some of those up and I'll show you how I set up my Facebook campaigns from scratch. So here I am back in my F-bomb uh, Facebook ads campaign section. I am going to create a new campaign. Now, a lot of people will tend to go for video views at the beginning or post engagements, which is fine. Uh, and if you want to start from scratch and you want to start there, then that's okay. But you've got to think that Facebook ads is running on an algorithm, so it needs to learn. And the way it learns is if you give it some instructions, it's gonna, you're gonna pretty much train it to do what you want it to do. Now, if you give it the wrong instructions or give it some uh, very convoluted instructions, it's gonna get things that you th it thinks you want, but it may not be what you actually think you want. Kind of confusing, but it does make sense, trust me. So instead of going for video views, even if you have video ads, I would say go for conversions. So you always wanna go for a conversion event that is what I recommend doing because even if you want to retarget um, your video viewers, which we will do later on, if we're doing the conversion section, at least what's going to happen when you retarget your viewers who have watched the videos, at least they're going to be people that Facebook deems as people that are more likely to convert. So just bear with me on that one. Trust me on that one. If you're going to do videos and running video ads, which it should be anyway, because still ads don't do as well anymore, still images. Make sure we're always going for conversions first. Now, you can test some other things and we'll talk about when we might use some of these a bit later on, probably in the uh, second or third video, when we come back just to do some kind of, you know, why would we use this, why wouldn't we? Um, but for now, if we're just prospecting, which is what we're trying to do, so think of us like gold mining, we're going out and we're trying to dig and we don't know where the gold is, but we have to start digging somewhere. So we just have to keep 
digging and learning. So when we find one piece of gold, we have to double down on it. So we're going to start here. So conversions. We can call this something. So I'm just going to call this uh, nurse t-shirts. I'm going to do this as a test campaign. You can call it whatever you want. Doesn't really matter. Just make sure you understand what it is. Because you might be looking at this three months later and go, what the hell was that campaign? And it always helps if you just name everything properly from the beginning. So we're not doing special categories. We're not running for Congress so or, or doing any of that sort of stuff. So we can leave that alone. We're going to leave this as auction. Conversions, like I said, is what we're trying to aim for. We can do A-B testing, but I probably wouldn't do this at the beginning. We don't know enough and we want to go wide. Okay, so we just want to go kind of go wide at the beginning. We want to learn as much as we can. So we're going to leave that for now. Now, I always turn this on at the beginning because I think Facebook's much smarter than me in terms of determining where to put the budget. Now, you can do campaign budget optimization or you can do ad set budget. Now, when you do campaign budget optimization, Facebook is going to decide if you have five ad sets in a campaign and you're spending $50 on that campaign, Facebook is gonna decide where to put that $50 as it tries to learn and find people for your store. Now, if you're gonna do ad set budget, that means you're determining, like you're allocating physically that money to each ad set. So I don't always think that's a good idea, but again, we will talk about later on when you might wanna have ad set level budget first, campaign budget optimization. There was some rumors before and talk before that Facebook was gonna remove the manual ad set set up for, for budgets, but they have revoked that and now they're gonna have both. So you can have campaign budget optimization or you can have ad set budget. Uh, so this is cool because it gives you options and I think they both play a role, but at the beginning, when you're starting from nothing, I think campaign budget optimization is the way to go. So we're gonna leave that. Now, daily budget, I always try and spend around $1,000 um, in the first month. Now, that sounds a bit crazy to some people. And you'll be like, I don't have $1,000 to spend, and that's fine. You can spend whatever you think you need to spend, but I always say that uh, it's better to spend more upfront to let Facebook learn. You're pretty much paying Facebook to, or training Facebook, um, uh, and you're paying for that. So you're paying for Facebook's education. Uh, you're like a proud parent paying Facebook to go off to sales university and find you more clients uh, or customers. So I'll probably put in something like $33, I think. If you add that up, probably gets close to $1,000 um, on a daily budget. So again, this whole CBO thing is explained in my other video. It's a 45 minute video. So if you're serious about getting good at Facebook ads, you'll go and check it out. If you're lazy, then, well, I don't know how to help you. Um, but if you wanna understand how this actually works, I've broken that down in that video. So like I said, it's gonna be in the description and in the comments to so go and click it and uh, watch it and you will be better for it, I promise you. Okay, so we've done this. Uh, we're not gonna do any of these other options. So there's scheduling, I'm not gonna worry about that now. Um, there is some things we can talk about in terms of bid capping and stuff like that, which is more advanced. And we'll talk about that in the third video in the series. Um, this is when you've actually, you know, kind of know a few more things about your customers and about your account and how it's going. So we're gonna leave that for now. So you can see the whole setup. We've got our test, we've got pretty much, you haven't touched much at all. We've just turned on campaign budget optimization and set our budget. Next. Now this is where we come, uh, all those things we, we just found in our um, audience insights tool will come in handy. So we wanna choose an event. Now I haven't set up an event yet because I haven't set up everything in um, Facebook and Shopify just yet. But if I was gonna do it, I always try and go for something in the realms or closest to a purchase. Now if you're going straight for, for like a purchase you're probably not gonna do too well. So you wanna do a few things, um, like a few steps removed essentially. And so a few steps removed could either be initiate checkout or it could be add to cart. I like to go for add to cart. And now if you're struggling with add to cart or even getting people to add to cart, then you probably wanna move to something like viewed content or view content. 
um, which means that they're landing on your pages and they're actually looking at your content on your page. You need about 50-ish conversion events, or sorry, I should say events, um, to move out of the learning phase. Now, sometimes when you're running Facebook ads, you'll see, uh, well, most times when you're running Facebook ads, you'll see a learning, your little learning thing next to it when you launch a campaign. Sometimes you'll get into limited learning. Again, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. I don't want to confuse you in this uh, in this video, but we, we will talk about that in our upcoming videos. But just know that you need about 50 events to like per week, 50 events per week to exit the learning phase for your ad set. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in detail in the next video. But for now, just know that you need about 50 uh, events. So you're probably not going to get 50 purchase events straight off the bat. Um, so you want to try and move it up to add to cart or view content or something like that. Cool. So we're targeting. Okay, let's have a look. So the first one we're going to do is that we are going to target people that buy off Teespring. So we're going to go Teespring. Oop. I can't even spell. Oh boy. All right. Teespring, then nursing. I'll just put something like interests and cold. So we know it's cold traffic and exactly what we're targeting. And if we really want to, if we really want to do our due diligence here, we can go eight. So add to cart. So we know exactly what uh, conversion goal we're going after as well, because we're trying to train Facebook to go after the things that we want and we want them to go look for customers that are going to pay money and buy our stuff. So we're going to go down here. Now I am in Australia, but I'm, I want to target the United States. So I am going to do that. Boom. All right, cool. I'm going to leave this, going to leave this and we are going to do some detailed targeting. So this is where all that work we just did in audience insights will come in handy. So we've got this and we will go down and find, uh, there it is. So we've got Teespring. I think that's the one we had said in the, th in the ad set. So we just want to find this in here. We found it. Okay, cool. So I can target Teespring. Now, if you look over here, we're targeting 230 million people. That's quite a lot. Uh, we just want to check a few things here. That, just to make sure that we're targeting everything correctly. So people living in a location, that should change it a little bit or it doesn't. Okay, well, we just want to make sure we're targeting people that are living in the United States. I would always say you don't want an audience smaller, smaller than about a million people when you're targeting something like United States or United Kingdom. When you're in Australia, it's kind of tough because we have limited inventory because we have a very small population. Even though we're a huge country, we have a very small population. So it's hard to always get that million mark. Um, but when you're in the United States, United Kingdom, you can kind of go a bit more nuts and, uh, and just kind of let it roll. So we've got Teespring here. We're going to, what we call narrow audience. So we're going to narrow it down. So we talked about nursing, right? So we want to find, let's go registered nurses. I'm going to pop that in. So this is what we call interest stacking. So we're stacking things on top of each other. So we can find that people who like Teespring uh, and also who um, are registered nurses or are interested in registered nursing, there is uh, 6,200 on there. All right, cool. So we could probably go down a little bit further if you wanted to. Uh, and, the th and the one I always love to use um, is, if we can go back up, is uh so we have we could do online shopping but i like engaged shoppers so these are people that facebook have deemed have gone on and ma actually made sales um, on facebook ads and that's the data it's collected and you can see here it's actually brought it down to uh, around 3.1 million uh so that's pretty good i am pretty happy with that so we could run this 
And um, the reason why we're kind of going wide, you'd be like, why aren't you actually trying to narrow this down to specific people? Now, Facebook, like I said, is running on, a, on an algorithm and it is much smarter than you and, or I. Uh, it is connect, it's collecting data, not just from your account, but from all other Facebook ads users and it is learning and learning and learning. So you need to let it go and find the customers. Um, don't freak out because it's a lot smarter than you think it is. As long as you've got some basic targeting in here and you're not going absolutely berserko, it should be fine. So you've got this targeting here. This is all set up. This is all looking good. Um, now, the reason again why you don't want to go too specific, and you can even turn this off, I would say, because there's a lot. Uh, oh, okay. Let it expand. I'll leave it alone. Um, you could, uh, if you wanted to, you know, get way more granular, but you're better off doing that once you have some data that's coming in. Um, because what's going to happen is your cost per click is going to be way more expensive the kind of more granular you go. Now, it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but trust me, this is how we start and it works every time. So I'm leaving that on. Some people say turn this off. I'm leaving it on. Um, like I said, if you're running a jewelry store or you just got, you know exactly who, like the one kind of crowd that you're targeting, you could literally just maybe get rid of this and this, uh, just have jewelry and then engage shoppers and then see the number that comes off over here. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna go to ads. Make sure we've got the right page. So we've got F1 again, we haven't set all this up properly. We want to make sure the Instagram page is there, which, yep, cool. There's our Teespring ad uh, for nursing. Cool, now there's one thing I think I forgot to mention and we'll go back quickly, just quickly. Um, back to our ad set. And that is to quickly talk about placements. So. You can do manual placements, which means you can select where exactly you want your ads to show on the Facebook network, because don't forget that Facebook owns not just Facebook, but Instagram, and uh, they have the audience network, which is a bit like the Google Display Network um, and Messenger as well. Uh, and I think soon to be WhatsApp as well is going to be including this, but some people will just try and pick, you know, just Instagram. So, you, you know, the untick everything and just try and target just Instagram. What's going to happen is it's going to limit your, you can see here, it's not too bad, but it can limit your reach. So I used to leave on everything because Facebook needs to find where your customers hang out. They may not all be hanging out on Facebook. They might be on Instagram. They might be on Messenger. You don't know. Let Facebook do the hard work at the beginning. So just leave this on automatic placements. Okay. So that's the one thing I just wanted to call out. Make sure you're on automatic placements. We're going back here. Now, like I said, video is king. So I want to set up a new video. And uh, I will add a video. I'm going to upload one from now. Okay, I'm going to upload one. But uh, it'll be a whole, uh, here's one I prepared earlier. So just bear with me. I'm going to go find that. Uh, give me two seconds and I'll come back and you'll see the uh, video that we've got. Okay, cool. So I am back. I have found my video. So here it is here. Here's the video I'm going to use for my ad. So I actually got this video um, from Placeit. So Placeit is a site where uh, you can do mock-ups. So I'll just show you quickly what that looks like as well. So you're going to place it. Computer's running really slow, so just bear with me. Uh, and you can use this website to actually uh, generate, the, if you're doing print on demand, generate your designs on some pre-existing uh, templates. So if I wanted to do something like, uh, let's see, mockups, and say like I wanted to do a video mockup. Let's go video, bam. Oh, I could have been the video shirt. Whoops, doesn't matter. Did that work? Yeah, cool. So this is what I had. This is the one, um, but I just had my design on it. So I just use this design here, um, which one of my designers whipped up for me. 
I design as well, but uh, sometimes I'm so busy I just don't have time, so I outsource it to some designers. And I use this, and I and please, it helps you put uh, your print-on-demand um, design on this mock-up, so you can use it for ads and things like that, or even Instagram placements. So you could go in, and I could select something. I can upload an image. Uh, I go into do 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 do. Um, Let's go to desktop and I had, there we go. So I'm just gonna move this up a bit so it's actually not on her stomach because that's gonna look weird. No one has designs on their stomach. Maybe we reduce a little bit, do do, and then oh, that'll do. Move it across. I hate using mouse. I'm so used to using uh, arrows on my arrow keys. And then you put that on there and it's gonna mock it up for you. So there you go. And that's how I got that on there. Um, so this is really cool because then, uh, and then it's gonna it's gonna whip through this, and it's gonna um, just make sure it's optimized so it looks good. And then you can use it in ads. So and they even tell you after you've done this when when it's ready to download, which is really cool. So I recommend place it if you're doing uh, print on demand and you want to start running ads. I think it's a really cool thing uh, to use because video is so important and when you see someone else wearing a shirt you can see it there when you can see someone else wearing a shirt um, it just helps with the whole um, likability thing when people want to buy products uh, they can see themselves in it so this is a really 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 cool piece of software I like it um, it does a whole bunch of other things as well uh, you can do logos designs everything if you want later on and you want me to do some a whole series not even a series like a whole video on just place it and the things you can do in here and to how it works with, with print on demand um, leave a comment in the comments below and we will make that happen so anyway i'm back here i've got my design i showed you how to do that you can go in and do it yourself um so you could just pop in here like i don't know it's it's almost two o'clock and uh, my brain has stopped working, but we'll see what copy I can come up with. Oh, and my computer's gonna die. Awesome. Uh, so here, headline is, uh, this is, <laughs> oh my God, my copy is really bad. Um, now, obviously I would come up with a much better piece of copy than that. But like I said, I'm pretty much brain dead. Uh, and it is almost two o'clock in the morning, so we will just make do, just as an example, uh, with the copy I'm gonna write, so don't judge me. Um, and my computer's running really slow, this is really good. Uh, not frustrated at all, don't actually wanna pick it up and use it as a frisbee, not in the slightest. So the other thing that I wanna talk about quickly, and I'm just gonna unplug this again so my computer doesn't overheat, but, because we selected all those different placements before, you wanna make sure that your ads are optimized for every single placement. Now, not all of these are. So you can click on these. You can swap images out. So I can actually edit this placement as well. Um, and maybe I want a still image instead of a, I don't know, like a, a video, I can make that happen. I can crop some stuff, um, whatever I wanna do. But just make sure that, so here I've got some examples. So I might want to select that and go, okay, cool. This one is the one I want because it's for the right hand column. So this is for desktop, save. And what you should see this little red, yeah, cool. So the little red thing disappeared, which means it's now optimized for that placement. Uh, you might want to have different copy in there because um, maybe some of these placements are smaller than others. So yeah, just go in and make sure these are all set up. Um, the other ones are stories. Stories I see a lot as well, where people go wrong. You want that full screen experience, you can do that as well. Uh, I have another one in here. I don't know if my computer will let me change it. I think it's about ready to die. Uh, let's just see anyway, if I can change this out, just to give you an example of how to do it. Uh, yeah, so I can upload a different video if I wanted to. Okay, cool. So my computer decided to shut down my recording, my screen recording software, uh, which tells me that it's about ready to explode. Um, but 
I went in and I made the change to the story ad that I mentioned. So you can see that here, I have actually changed that and there it is. So I've updated that for that placement with a different um, ad that is more suitable for that placement, essentially. So I can save that and that should appear there. So that's why I mentioned that you wanna make sure that if you have all those different placements, if you're setting it to automatic placements, and this tool is really cool, uh, that rhymes. Um, so you can actually have the different placements in here uh, with the different ads that are customized for each one of those, which means it's gonna make sure that it performs well for each placement. So if you don't do it, it just means that you're gonna be running rubbishy ads. So if you wanna change it, make sure you do, uh, and you can do that and change the different um, uh, the, the different videos if you want to. So you can see here, really cool option, really cool tool. And this is pretty much it, that gets you up and running. So if I wanted to, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna publish these, but I would hit publish after I've also put it in my URL. Uh, it's gonna tell me to do that, so where I wanna send the traffic. I also might wanna do, uh, make sure this is shop now and not uh, learn more. And the other thing that I would like to do normally is set up my UTM tracking so I can track it in Google Analytics, um, but we won't talk about that today. And I'm just gonna close that. So that is my first ad. So then what I wanna do is duplicate that ad set. So I've got Teespring Nursing. I'm gonna duplicate this. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a quick duplicate. That might be better. It's just easier to do, less intensive on the CPU. Uh, come on computer, survive. Let's just get through this. Okay, so all I'm gonna swap out here is, remember I've got these different things here. So I've, I had Teespring, now I'm gonna put it in Redbubble because we wanna test these audiences against each other. So Redbubble, there we go. So Redbubble, bang, got it. All right, cool. So that's my other audience and I will publish that but for now I'm gonna I'm just gonna close it and I just want to keep doing that so for all the different audiences I've found I want to put them into different ad sets I don't want to put them in the same one I want to put them in different ones so I can test and learn and see which one is better so I'm gonna do that and have them all here uh, I'm gonna turn them off for now because I don't want just in case I don't think they will run because they have no URL and I just want to I just want to do it because I um, am paranoid essentially um, so these I would have, and I could have like five of these or however many interests that I found in the Audience Insights tool. And I'd have all these in here and I would start running them. So then I would run them over the course of a few weeks because everyone gets a little bit trigger happy and tries to turn things off even if they're not performing in seven days. And then I've seen it happen on the seventh day, things start to actually work out. So be prepared to spend a little bit of money and don't get too freaked out if it doesn't start to pay off. If within about 10 days, nothing's happening, you can start to turn off your campaigns um, or start pausing them. If they're atrocious, like really terrible, like the, maybe the, the cost per click is really expensive, then you could probably turn it off after probably like five to seven days. Um, but if it's all kind of doing well, even if the conversions aren't fantastic, give it seven days at least, and then you can decide whether to turn it off or not. Okay, so that's pretty much what I'll do. We're gonna run We'd have run five of these different campaigns. We would test them against each other. And then we'd hopefully find, start to find ones that are winning. And then we want to actually look at some metrics and determine how we can break these down even further. So that's where we start to get a little bit more granular. Um, we might want to test some more of these. We might want to do some retargeting. And we're going to talk all about that in the next video coming up uh, next week. So that's when we're going to see a little bit more. I'm going to dive into my customer um, uh, customer things that I'm running, uh, client client campaigns that I'm running um, for better examples. And I'll show you how to set up retargeting. And that is where the true power of Facebook lies is when you're retargeting and doing lookalikes, which we'll do in the third video. But for now, have a play around with this, test it out. And if you've got any questions, just put it down in the comments below. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna say is I have a live event coming up next week. I will also have the link to that in the description below. So if you're interested in joining me live um, to ask me any questions about e-commerce, um, we can have a look at your stores. Um, so if anyone wants us to review a store, we can review your stores. 
Um, you can ask us questions about Facebook ads, about Google ads, whatever it might be, anything to do with e-commerce. We will be answering that live next week on our first ever live uh, YouTube live. So make sure you join me for that. I don't want to be sitting there all by myself with tumbleweeds going across the screen and me just going, where is everybody? And I end up talking to myself. So make sure you come along and join me on that one. Bring a beer along with you or your favorite beverage and uh, we'll have a good time. We can have a chat and hopefully I can help you out a little bit as well. But until then, I will have the next video in this series ready next week and uh, play around with it. And like I said, if you have any questions, make sure you pop them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you like this video because it will help with the YouTube algorithm and I really, really, really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, I will see you next week. I am out of here to go get some sleep. So catch you later.